Welcome to Wizards Outlook. Joined tonight by Raymond Lyons, Cardell Dudley Jr. I'm Wilson Tarpe Jr. And uh, the Washington Wizards, you guys see at the bottom screen, they handled the Oklahoma City Thunder 119 to 107. Uh, they're in the midst of a solid little win streak. But uh, who went first last? Go ahead, man. You go ahead. All right, we'll let you kick it off. Your initial thoughts on uh, tonight's win. Um. As crazy as this might sound, to be perfectly honest, I, I was a little afraid coming into this game because you you never know with these guys, man. They they tend to play down to their level of competition and just, you know, it, it, it's a crapshoot sometimes with them. And, um, you know, they, they start off the first quarter um, fairly strong, but as the game progressed, you know, think, things just got a little dicey. And uh, they they was letting these guys hang around for too long, and I mean, you know, of course, this is not the um, the best version of OKC's roster, to, to put it politely. But um, they still NBA players, so you know, if if the if you feel the team is that inferior, then you come out and handle business and put them out their misery. And um, you know, the young the young guys fought, and uh, you know the. It, it's it took the Wizards a while almost to the end of the game to really put it away. But um, you know, they, they got the win, man. Uh you know, Rustin had the best shooting night, but you know, he, he did he did the other things well. Um Bradley Bill, he he ended the game with uh with thirty, I believe. Um you know, Gafford came in and gave his his normal burst off the bench. Uh so I mean, you know, that just just glad they were able to eventually handle business. Um, this would have been devastating to lose a game like this, you know, with when they're in the midst of um, trying to grab one of these uh, playing spots. And with, you know, Chicago doing what they're doing without Levine, you know, the, the pressure's on. So it's it's imperative that, you know, you you don't drop a game like this, especially we, <laughs> with what you got coming in here on Wednesday. Um that that dude's on the on the heater like <laughs> like has rarely been seen. So um that's that's gonna be hell to deal with. But uh you know glad they you know they eventually put it away. Um you know you just want to see them come out and keep up their intensity, um stay disciplined. You know, it's uh it's um this is one of those games where you feel like that it's the potential where they just go ahead and look ahead and chalk this one off as a as a win. But they're not in a position to do that. They they got to come out and, and get things done. So, um, oh no, just glad they got the win. Uh, I just felt like they did what they should have did. You know, they handled business. They got the win by any means necessary. Was it the most impressive win? No, I'm uh, sure we would have loved to see them just stomp. Um, OKC game be over in the third quarter, and the starters get some rest, and you know the reserves, you know, ha you know, take it from there. But you know. The Wizards had patches in this game where they played to their competition. You know, they just saw a bunch of G League guys, a bunch of young guys trying to make their mark, and they ain't take them too serious. And um, they played down to it, and that's when OKC, you know, jumped on them. You know, um, I felt like the bench play was, you know, outstanding for the Wizards, you know, especially Bertans going 6-12. Um, that's what the contract was for, for him to shoot like that all the time. Uh, you know, obviously Lopez, you know, the jump hook monster continues, man. It is what it is. Can't nobody guard him. You know, he's drawing doubles and everything. Like, I predicted a few a few games ago, like, you're going to start drawing doubles if you keep this up in the years. You know, and it's crazy. So, um, you know, Gafford, I mean, I mean, what can you say? He's probably the move of the – outside the big names, he's probably the move of, um, you know, the, the trade deadline, you know, getting him. He's been he's been pivotal ever since he's been healthy with the Wizards. They won games. I only think they probably lost like two games since he's played since he's came on over. What one? Okay, even better. So that's the impact that they've been missing and all that. So um, and then you got to look at it. What is it? Fifty five points off the bench for the Wizards, and you get that production. Um, you know that's big. They can rumble with anybody, especially considering that Denny's still struggling. Then. Uh, you know, he didn't struggle, but he he's not getting, you know, a lot of shot attempts, obviously. Uh, Bill, Bill doing what he, he's supposed to do. You know, 30 ball, that's what he's averaging. Keep that consistent. Uh, Russ had a typical triple-double. He didn't shoot well. And then, you know, you guys are going to cry about this in the comments later, but who cares? 
eight turnovers. He had eight of the Wizards, of the Wizards 12 turnovers. Um, you know, this this what we, you know, got to clean that up, man. It's too late in the season for that, man. It's just it is what it is. You about to deal with some monsters, especially one that's on – I mean, he, he and John Wigmo coming in on Wednesday. So, uh, you can turn the ball low against them if you want. The game will be over by halftime all from him alone. So, you know, it is what it is, man. But all in all, it was impressive. Uh, I mean, not impressive. You know, they did what they had to do, uh, the, the free throw shooting. Uh, that the up and down with that, they got to they got to get that under control because the way they're driving into the paint, scoring, uh, pretty much having them between fifty and sixty points a night, you know, in the paint, you get foul, you get into the line, those easy points. Plus, they have two good at shooters to be shooting fifty eight percent as a team. Like that's just, you know, that that's that is gonna be soon. It's gonna be hacker wizard. You know, what I'm saying if you're gonna keep shooting like that, so we can win this game. They gotta clean that up, but. Um, they did what they had to do, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna really see what it is on, on Wednesday. See how much, how far they came, how far they come. Because uh, the Warriors are coming off an impressive win in Philly tonight. Steph went off. You know, Wiggins played well, and those guys gonna come in here hungry. I mean, they fighting for playoff season too, so they're not about to come in here half stepping. Um, and the Wizards, they got they got to find a way to keep winning because Chicago won, so they tied with Chicago for I believe the ninth and tenth spots and the playoff spots, and Toronto right on them, and then the Cavs behind them. So one loss and you could be completely out of it like that. So they have to keep on, they have to keep winning. Um, this is the name of the game, and Wilson, I believe you said this the other night. They in the teens as far as uh, games left. There's no margin for error. All those games that they they lost that they shouldn't have lost at, at the beginning of the season and put them in this position. So um, they they really can't afford L's right now because they'd be up out of it um, and be at the crib like us watching the playoffs. Yeah, and, and that's the that's the the saddest part about it, right? Is you see where where they are right now. Trajectory is clearly up, but if you mismanage this opportunity here, um, you end up almost in purgatory because you kind of played yourself outside of the possibly the really good picks, the, the top five. And you're just in that middle spot. And if this drags on to out the end, where it comes down to like maybe you miss it by half a game um, because you're that close, that's a tough spot to be in. Um, but again, they get to control their fate. That's the most important part about that. Despite the stumble at the beginning, it's up to them. And the stumble at the beginning, that was also their own fault. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it goes hand in hand. Uh, despite all that, you have an opportunity. Like you guys said, it's nothing impressive about tonight. What is important is you won the game. Like, like that, that was the mission. You did it. Um, you definitely didn't get any style points in this one. No style points given. Uh, you built a double, you almost built a 20 point lead. Uh, <laughs> it got so bad, I had to learn how to spell my man Pukusevsky's name. <laughs> <laughs> because, because for a while I just let it rock. I had to go learn how to spend uh my Yuki's name because he he had a couple, you know, their young guys had a couple stretches where, you know, you turn the ball over, and this is the tough. This is the thing like Ray said all the time with young teams, you end up in them situations. You don't, they don't know any better, man. They just kept playing. They just kept taking the threes, and for a little while, guess what? The same shots that they miss to let them to let you go up seventeen. They started. They started raining threes. <laughs> Jerome was hitting them. Uh, I think Maladon had a couple, but you know, again, uh, Zv had some. Uh, Alex, I'm not gonna mess with your last name again, but they started falling for a bit and they were in trouble. Baisley had some flashes, uh, and again, like Cardell said, um, y'all yeah, feel how you're gonna feel about it. But this is one of those games where, especially when you have a tendency to play down a team like this, a good team, you put this away, you get some rest, you keep it moving. And this is why, you know, they're at where they – like, they are who they are right now. You had an opportunity to do that. And instead, you go into the half where uh, – no, was it the third quarter where a bucket was waved off? It could have been down seven going into the fourth instead of nine. But they said that the bucket didn't count. Like, it was just closer than it needed to be. Um, folks played minutes that they should have had to play tonight. That said, you get a day off. You got a man on fire coming in here on Wednesday. Um, and – like to me, and I know we'll, we'll talk about this after Wednesday's game. Like the big thing to me is we know what, you know, we already know what that is, right? Um, and, you know, Golden State's kind of had that issue at times where in Washington's had that issue is where are the others going to make enough shots um, in that one? And, you know, it'll be fun to see. 
Uh, but I know we got some interesting comments to get to, but if y'all have anything else about this specific game, let me know. I'm not worried about the Warriors making shots, man. The Wizards need to make some shots, man. <laughs> Steph, Steph can make enough for them to win. That's, that's all that matters. And, and you know, now people are just starting to realize that Andrew Wiggins can play basketball for some reason. I don't know. That's Maybe crazy. they need to stop going with the soap opera BS or whatnot. He's a career 20-a-game scorer, and he averaging, what, 18 with the Warriors and, and is actually chilling. He's not being overly aggressive because of what this dude is doing. That well, AI say that light skinned assassin, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I mean, he's a serial killer, so nah, nah and you know, we, we ain't look, they can come here with that mentality, like, yo, I don't know if they can score enough. Okay, play defense like that, see why. <laughs> All right, so just real quick, just throwing out this little itty bitty numbers thing because folks love numbers. This is what's walking into this building. Um, 55 50 91 of the shooting splits in the last 10 games. Oh, I know. I'm watching every one. Yeah. Yeah. 55, 50, 91. It's ugly. Think, <laughs> no, you, saw like, you saw the tweet. You saw the tweet I sent y'all. <laughs> talking about Steph Curry mom going off. <laughs> my, man, my man beat the Sixers and probably going to get in trouble because of what he did to his little brother. Like, exactly. it's bad, man. But I think someone else has a clip, uh, something from last week. He made, he made more threes than like four or five NBA teams last week in yeah. the week. Like, right. Again, not being extra like this is absurd. And is that all time, good? Go ahead. And all time, I think they showed a graphic. He got 21 games of 10 made three pointers in his career. I think the next dude got like seven. And it goes on down from there. Everybody in single digits. And it's counting. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You said it's counting. Like they're the greatest shooter of all time. Like it ain't half court, you gotta guard them. And the wizards struggle guarding regular. So that's a whole different animal. So yeah, um, and honestly, with Steph and with you know Wiggins, obviously what they're doing, um, the Draymond effect because Denny has not been up to par. Rui, I don't know if Rui's gonna play. Draymond could be disruptive. He, he can mess around, mm -hmm. disrupt that whole game, especially defensively. Whatever, like you know, love Denny, but he ain't dealt with somebody like a cerebral type defender like Draymond that could literally guard all five positions. It's just it's different than when you throw Wiggins and Uber what they can do. And their bench is not sweet. You know, you got Poole and all, the, all those guys that can score. You know what I mean? So um, they, it looks like they haven't been able to um, make the normal amount of shots because they've been playing great teams lately, the team, the heavy hitters lately, you know what I'm saying, and in their fair share of wins. So it, it's going to be interesting to see, man. We're going to see, like I said, it's a good test to see just how far – the Wizards that have, have, have um, come, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it just they win it now because they playing a bunch of teams that either like them or lower, and they just have better personnel, more experienced players in the backcourt than we take it over, or have they really made a little jump where they really improve and stuff like that, and they can start winning games and really are seriously trying to make a playoff push, and we got to take them more serious. Um, that We will see Wednesday. We definitely will. My bad graphic popped up at that 49 from tonight. Um, all right, we're going to get into these comments real quick. All right, we'll start off with this one from I Dan. Um, Danny doesn't get any passes. I can't see his, I can't see he has ups and downs. If he got the ball this game and missed a lot of shots, then I'll pray. But you can expect points from a guy that doesn't get any passes. Same goes for Bonga and Garrison and even Bertans. Yeah, yeah, I have at it. Well, one, well, let's, tonight, Denny had 11 shots. He, he made three of them, went 0 for 6 from the three-point line, went 0 for 1 from the free-throw line. Uh, he had six points. Um, that's more than enough shots, especially with Rui out, especially with Bill, especially with Bertans back. Robin Lopez got it going in the post. He's been having it going for, like, the last 10 to 15 games. Daniel Gary for six for six. Uh I mean, he's getting the amount of shots he should get in his role as a rookie right now based on what he's shown. And he missed a lot of those shots. So when you miss a lot of shots, the ball is probably not going to find you too many more times because it's a game to win. Um, that's the beautiful thing about this game. The game will reward production. And if you're not producing, you often get forgotten because we have to win this game. Uh, it's not this game don't care about feelings. It's about who's producing. 
until he starts producing more, how can you expect him to get more shots and touches? See, this is what uh, the fandom just makes y'all look crazy. I'm not and like, come on now. You know, and you see Russ, he damn near getting 15 assists a game. So he's definitely passing the rock. He's passing this to somebody. If then he made more shots, he probably be averaging 20 plus assists. So <laughs> I mean, what you want them, what you want them to do, man? They're like I gotta stop making excuses for the players y'all like, man. They they just got they gotta get it done. He's healthy. He's just a rookie. We keep saying be patient. You know, we're not throwing him under the bus like he ain't got or he's a bus or something like that. It's far from that. It's his first year. He's learning. But you can't put him in a superstar role when he hasn't even, you know, figured out how to be uh, just a productive rookie right now. You know, as simple as that. At least offensively. Defensively, I see him making plays. I'm talking about offensively. Right. I mean – yeah, man, he's he's getting the opportunities that his play has warranted. Um, and we've even seen at times when Russ, like, he'll give him chances and then he'll make a mistake and Russ will continue to go to him to try to build his confidence and, um, you know, and keep him engaged. So, I mean, I, yeah, man, just, just cut the excuses out. I mean, he, like I said and has said almost every show, he's a rookie. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, we can't thrust him into a position that he's not ready for. So, I mean, if if you think if you think it's bad now, then imagine if he had even more responsibility. So, yeah, man, just just just, just give him some time. You know, it's it's his first time in the states, first time playing NBA basketball. He's in, he's twenty years old. Uh, it. <laughs> It'll it'll come. He's clearly talented. You just just gotta wait and be patient and let things play out. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. Investing out the blue. I just hate how now that Curry shoots fifty percent in Durant, they judge everyone by that standard, but it's crazy and unfair. I mean, this is see this is my problem with today's fans and you know even players just today in general the, the standard is the standard the standard ain't gonna lower for you you got to elevate your game to that standard like that's just what it is um y'all gotta cut that out just because you can't reach it you can you can't lower the bar move goalposts to fit to make yourself look up to par when you know you're not man you know yeah if you're shooting 50%, that's the standard for guard play. 50% from the field shooting, that's elite. Especially in games, especially if you that dude, when they throwing all types of defenses at you, you still going to make half your shots? That's elite. If you're hitting that from three, that's stupid. I don't know. I mean, look at it, man. Like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, some you might have to take a hard foul or something. We got to mess you up because that's ridiculous. You're embarrassing us now. And that's pretty much what Steph has been doing. So, I mean, what you want us to do except – 32% from the field to be great? I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do you what do you, what do you want, man? You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. Y'all got to cut this out, man. It's just, you know, championships, it's, it's the same stuff. Championships don't mean as much, you know, and all that. Yeah, it does, man. That's the difference. If you got two great players, the one great player who won, guess what? He's going to get the edge over the one who didn't because you dominate to win games. And we you win games, you're eyeing to win the championship. That's the name of the game. That's why you dominate. If it was going to be about numbers, we could just scrap all this team play and just make it a one-on-one -on -one game. The last man standing, hey, he's the best. It is what it is. But, no, we're not going to lower the bar. You either up your game up to that standard or, you know, be quiet. It is what it is. Right. Yeah, man, like you <laughs> – there, it's a reason why Steph is who he is and KD is who he is. You know, this this comes from people trying to put other guys in their class and trying to move the goalposts to make that argument valid. No, man, if they want to be mentioned with those guys, then they need to produce on the level those guys are producing on. It, it, it is what it is, man. It, it's a reason why... <laughs> Steph is considered the greatest shooter ever because of what he does on the court. You know, it's a reason why KD is considered one of the greatest scorers ever 
You know, you can't downplay what he did to try to elevate somebody else. That's stupid. I mean, it, it, life don't work that way, man. Like, really? if, if if you if you if you got if you in a job where you working off sales commission and somebody sell a hundred more times than you, they gonna get a higher commission. That that's how life works, man. Like, so you can't just just cut it out. Like, I can't fair. It, exactly it is not some people won't be better than you with things and that that's just is what it is man and you know if if curry said in the bar where he said it if KD said in the bar where he said it either you reach it or you don't and if you don't then they're better it's just plain and simple man so i mean i i halfway understand what he's saying but because like I think he's trying to say if people are saying if you don't produce to the level of Steph and, and KD, then you're not good, which is far from the case because it's a whole different level between good and what they do. But on the other hand, if you don't do what they do, don't mention a player with them because that's what that's what separates. So just just leave leave everybody in a box, as Wilson likes to say. <laughs> don't, just, don't, just don't leave, put me in this now. <laughs> <laughs> leave them in. Leave them in a box. Don't put somebody in Steph's class that don't got no business being there, and we'll be fine. That's the thing. People try to. <laughs> it, people got a problem with greatness these days, man. Everybody, <laughs> everybody can't be great. Man. Everybody can't be great. Yeah. Steph, <laughs> Steph is on a whole other planet. Like so, don't put. Don't try to. Don't try to reword things and, and do verbal gymnastics to put other people in his stratosphere because, I mean, they ain't just going to look crazy. Yeah, my only little two cents is, I don't know who you're talking to that's doing that. Stop stop talking to them. Um, <laughs> I also know it's not us. And then, too, like, like, like with the greatness thing, some things don't need to be put together, right? Like the way that Russ does what Russ does, mm-hmm. why, are, why are we even mentioning him? With two of the greatest scorers, like <laughs> the greatest shooter ever, and one of the greatest scorers ever, we shouldn't like we shouldn't like. That's not the conversation we throw Russ in, right? Like, like why do that to Russ? What Russ does, Russ does things like the things that make Russ great are the things that make Russ great. But jump throwing them two names in there, one of them things don't fit, especially if we're talking about shooting. Leave that alone. Like, just leave that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a conversation that shouldn't even be had. Like, we're going to talk about elite scores. This is not knocking Russell, but we that's a that's a that's a separate, totally different conversation that he ain't got no business in. All right. So that that that's all that is. But and that's not knocking Russ, because Russ could put the ball in the hole. He he mm-hmm. he, he damn near averaged 30 as MVP year. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. all right, he can he can put the ball in the hole, man. But efficiency is what separates average scores from good scores to great elite scores. Michael Jordan, to me, is the greatest scorer of all time. He has 10 scores, 10 straight scoring championships. Um, through all those, he shot 50% or better for the most part. He averaged like 32. Like, what are we talking about? You see what I'm saying? It's consistent. <laughs> I mean, and then he has the all-time highest average in regular season, postseason, and the finals. There's nothing else to discuss. He got it done every which way possible in a more physical time at every possible level you could do at the highest level. Like, you see what I'm saying? Okay. So just because a player today averaged 30 in the season, should we put them with Michael Jordan or are you going to say that's unfair? You feel what I'm saying? No, nah, we should not put them with Michael Jordan until they show some consistency. When they get up about oh, eight years of doing that Saints level of production, maybe we can start having that conversation. But one or two years ain't that. It, the same applies to this situation. With, with mm-hmm. the efficiency of a, a KD and Steph Curry, those are 50, 40, 90 dudes. And they but like a handful <laughs> of those in the history of the game. Matter of fact, I scratch that. It ain't, a, it ain't about a handful of them in the NBA and WNBA. In the history of the game, since this game became professional in the 40s, there's a reason for that. That's elite, elite. Just respect it. That's all you should do. Yeah, just like, what's it called? Uh, the year Russ won MVP. Shot like 42. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about putting things in perspective. At the same time, that like the equivalent of what, what you're talking about would be would be me saying, hey, his MVP doesn't matter because he shot 
and throwing away the fact that he had a freaking triple double and led that team. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and appreciate players for what they do because, because like what we say, Russ can't do what Steph do. Steph can't do what Russ do. Facts. Mm-hmm. But that's what makes the game beautiful. Put them on the court together. Give them some players, and let's see whose style, who uh, the way they play the game. Let's see who's better. And that's what clears it up. That's the that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like they, you can go back to the '80s. Magic and Bird ran that decade. They're very similar, but they still had different strength. Bird was an all-time great shooter. Magic wasn't a great shooter, but he could score. Bird could pass. Wait, you know he he could pass. But Magic is the greatest passer of all time. They both could rebound. They both were great team defenders, leaders. You see what I'm saying? It, it, and they, and when they played, it was beautiful because they would mirrored each other, but they still had a different, you know, strengths or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then it just came down to which team executed better. That's why those were some knockout, dragout series that went seven games up down there all the time. That's all it is. So stop expecting other players to be other players, man. It's, it, every player is different. And appreciate them individually for the for their greatness because mm-hmm. things that that Russ doesn't make Russ so great. And again. You know, sometimes when you when you and you know, I say this to my wife all the time because I think she, she makes some of the worst comparisons ever. Sometimes when you put things together that have no business together, you end up down this place because it just it just don't make sense. And then you got people getting mad at one of the things that you compare something to, and then it's not fair to that person because that person ain't asked to be put next to that. <laughs> <laughs> like like Ray said, like you took you took Russ out his own little box chilling. It was like, hey, let's come up, let's skip five boxes, come over here to mess with some of the most efficient scorers ever. Why do that to that man, man? Let that man live. Look, we all know that growing up in the 90s, when Jordan finally turned the corner slider winning championships, they compared every 6'6 six, six wing that could jump to this dude. Boy. Harold it was Mike. always the next Jordan. Harold Mine, Brian Hill, Jerry Stackhouse. <laughs> you know, and then come to find out Kobe the only one that that can you can even all right let, let's have a little conversation about it but it took him a minute to get going people forget he rode the bench his first couple of years and stuff trying to figure things out coming out of high school what it came to which what we came to realize is there's only one job so appreciate what he did and let that be what it is it's as simple as that and just enjoy this with russ man like enjoy this like what's about to be the third season with a triple double enjoy it mm-hmm. and just let it be uh, this is the second one, Vesting Out the Blue. This is the Russ I always dreamed he would he would be. He has his confidence back. That's what has changed. Clowns always compare his shooting to Curry. You got to stop talking to who you talk to. Lord, this is not healthy. Whoever that is, stop talking to him about basketball for a little bit. But no one shoots like Curry, so it's crazy. Westbrook shoots a higher field goal percentage than Kobe for his career. And again, <laughs> again literally, because it's no point to have the same conversation twice. Look at him. Look at him. One. No, he does not shoot a high field goal percentage to Kobe. Uh, Kobe's 44. I believe Russ is 43. And he's a, obviously Kobe's a better three-point shooter. And I think Kobe shot uh, 83 for, 83% from the free throw line for his career. Um, Russ is at 79% for his career. And this season, he's shooting 62%. I don't know what's going on this year. But... You know, he's 43, 30, and 79. Um, Kobe is 44% from the field for his career, 32% from three, 83% from the free throw line. No, he's not a more efficient scorer. And and, and we all know Kobe loved to shoot. So, <laughs> yeah, he had some games where it was just like, dog, pass the rock, dog. You know what I'm saying? So, no, it, you can't even go by that. That was And, and then if you want to – Jump, look, advice for y'all. If y'all gonna jump out there in the social media age, do some research first. So you won't be that that all like like shut out. Because you're trying to use Kobe to justify the, the field goal percentage. Like again, let Russ be Russ, man. Let him do what he do. Affect the game in all aspects or whatever. Compete. Um provide a competitive nature that too many NBA players are lacking that he just for him, it is always on. He don't flip the switch for nothing. He don't turn that off, which is what I love most about him. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, appreciate him for what he is, man. But nah, man, ain't nobody comparing uh, Russ. I don't know who's comparing Russ shooting to Curry because that should that's not even something you should compare. Um, no disrespect. Um, now we compare Steph with the Ray Islands and the Birds, the Jerry West. Like 
knock down shooters. You got to – even his own teammate, Clay. You know, KD, you know, Mark Price, Paige Stoyakovich, Dirk Nowitzki, dudes that can shoot the ball, man. Like, Allen Houston, that don't get mentioned enough. You know, Reggie Miller, people that can knock the shot, knock shots down from everywhere. <laughs> you you got to you got to stay with them, man. Chris Mullen, I can I can give you names for days. Dale Ellis, I can give you names. Great shooter, Sam Jones, going all the way back to the '60s. Sam Jones, dudes that don't miss. All right, we not putting Russ in that category, man. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know where you get your information from. I don't know where this coming from. Please disclose this when you see this. You know, so I need to know so I can know not to ever watch or listen to them. So give us that information, please. <laughs> like, again, let's just <laughs> why put, why set that man rest up like that, bro? <laughs> we talk about somebody, some of the, some of the folks with the greatest clips of all time. There's somebody who's never been known as a shooter. Like, so again, why do that to him? He ain't. Ne he'll never be that. He was never gonna be that. Like, he found out quick who he was and how he went about his business and what made him him. Right, and that's cool. And you know, staying within the realm of who he is as a player. Yeah, you want him to be more efficient. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's not an alternate. Reality. You can go across infinite realities. We he not getting put in no elite shooter conversation, so this this shouldn't even be discussed as it pertains to shooting. That is not fair to that man. <laughs> Leave him alone. Like like if anything, go talk about some of the, you know, some of the some of the greatest rebounding guards of all time. That's a great thing to talk about as it pertains mm -hmm. to him. Like, but the shooting thing, man, leave that alone. That's not fair to that man. Like if anything, you almost just like. Almost disparaging him at that point, like you putting him in a thing that he couldn't possibly win. <laughs> like it's just, it's just not right. <laughs> Did y'all have anything else though? I said that man Russell for failure. <laughs> All the wonderful positives that he brings to the table, and that's the thing y'all won't go talk about. With the with the dude who's literally walking around on fire. That's 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 not like. Right. Uh, and, and just to put things in perspective, I watched the end of the Warriors Sixers game. So game was on the line. I forgot what the score was. It was close or tied or something like that. So Steph got the ball. George Hill was up on him. So Steph starts to drive, and he's driving to see where the doubles come from. And so B start coming after him to try to swallow him up. So he crosses back over from where B is coming, and. He does a step back on George Hill. George Hill creates space. He creates space on George Hill. George Hill gets rocked back so much, he gets in the way of Embiid. And that was the dagger three. They got him like 48 or whatever he got, whatnot. You know, and then, of course, Step do a celebration where he yelling at the stand. I mean, Embiid ain't even had time to even get out there, though. <laughs> to try to contest. Like, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, do y'all see how this man warm up? You know, and we've had the pleasure of covering the games where we saw him in the rain and warm up. He's literally doing one, two dribble pull up drills from half from the logo, from half court. You see what I'm do you understand? And and the, and this ain't got and this is not a shot at Russ. I know Dane finished them finished that runoff in OKC, but who be who 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 got the clock ticking? That was Steph. When he hit that damn dagger three and KD in them last year and he started crit walking on them and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what got the that's what got it clicking. That's when the time was all right, this. You know, Russ coming to the arena with the, the with my man Mozart jersey on, like, yeah, I'm the dude. I'm shutting all that down. Okay, they got up three one stuff, and they, they stuff walked him down, hit that dagger. It's a wrap. Next thing you know, KD all that gone. He by himself. Come on, man. Like I'm trying to just be real about results. I love Russ, MVP and all that, but Steph knocking on the door, magic, trying to get to become the greatest point guard of all time. He's knocking on that door. Russ ain't at that door. It's, it's levels. So y'all gotta chill with that, man. Like I said, <laughs> let me know who you're who you're getting this from, so I can know if I see anything <laughs> on them to block them, so I don't have to even worry about it because I don't want to hear or see anything they have to say. Do me my that favor. My man's been out here waking up in the morning to box in ones. Conversation just be left alone. <laughs> just leave it alone. You got folks living at that level, like, 
forget the other four. Just get them to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Steph, Steph got people by like, all levels shooting threes. He's changed the game. Look how the, the, the whole league changed to do what he tried to do what he do. And they can't do what he do. That's why they trash is what? That's why they trash right now. They got dudes shooting ten, shooting like double digit three pointers, and can't even make a can't even make layups consistently. What sense does that make? Lord knows, I ain't even about to get to college. With well, college, different, they still structure. I'm not even about to get to like AAU and stuff. The stuff I done seen, man. Like oh, high school. Oh Lord Jesus, we not even going there. That, that shit makes you want to just walk out the gym. Like oh, I can't believe this. Shit. But the game has evolved so much. It evolved to what? Like you understand, he his pops had a clip. <laughs> his brother has a clip. Right. He comes from a family of shooters, dog. He just took it to a whole nother level. And this ain't new because he's been doing this since college. He put Davidson on the map. Like we didn't even know what Davidson what that was. So he got there. So come on, man. He's one of the all-time greats for a reason. Respect that, man. But I don't know who's comparing it, but we need to share. Just just let that comparison die somewhere. Please leave it alone. Don't bring it up again. You know what I'm saying? Just enjoy Russell for what Russell is, man. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a very safe place. Let that man live. Y'all have a good night. We'll be back tomorrow night for the Focus TV, and then we'll see you Wednesday night for Wizards Outlook. As always, Cardell Ray and myself, it's been Wizards Outlook.